Dude, did you see that? That was unbelievable right there. We can't always be rotating. Now, here's the thing. That low tight ball flight you see there is a combination of two things. It's a combination of, yes, having that wrist in a great position to where I don't have to manipulate anything. I'm already feeling more of that knuckles down feeling based upon where I'm set up right here. I just would hate, you know, man, it would just be terrible to be right there. And, then, yeah. and you think about what that would relay to versus and all the stuff that would have to go right in order to try to time that, no chance, right? So the big thing about that is now that we're getting a little bit more awareness of what we need to be feeling here, once we get that set position, which I still want you rehearsing down, your big thing has always been taking the belt buckle and keeping the belt buckle moving on the belt line. The direction at which your hips travel will be what keeps your spine angle down. Okay, so if the hips travel in a certain direction, that keeps my butt back, keeps my chest down. There's that real classic look you see Hogan, Sneed, a lot of the old school players have and a few of our younger guys. So the big thing about it is when we get in here, I want you to be aware of two things. The setting with connection to the center of the body and I want you to feel the back of your left arm in sequence with the left hip moving through. So you have the direction of your hip and you know why, why I always mention that left arm? Because when the hip travels and the arms don't, you're not doing yourself any favors. You're getting yourself further stuck behind you. So we call it hip and grip. Exactly. See, I love that. By the way, what Doug's doing, Doug, you do another one. This is something people should be doing at home all the time. I mean, see that right there? You, you slow that down. Actually, let's take a video of that. Go ahead and keep going for like one more second here, bud. Watch this. This is why people need to see this. Watch the angle for someone that didn't used to create a lot of lag. Look at the handle get to the ball, the club's still back there, and then look at that wrist action through impact. You can see that you get all the good stuff and extension happening. So very important, guys, that we just get in here and understand that hip and grip. We have the set, we have the turn, we have the hip and we have the grip. These work together. So here you go, I get in there, set it, make sure it's moving with the center of my body, boom, right back around, set, right back around. Yeah, it's so good, right? <laughs> That's fun. So it really is. I appreciate that, man. <laughs> I love that, Doug. Build the whole blueprint. It's okay, just didn't say down, right? Yep. That was a great backswing, by the way. It gave me credit on the good backswing, perfect wrist angles there. So. Yeah, nice job, buddy. Nice job, nice job. Here's the thing, I'd be, I'd be completely lying if I told you that in my mind, I feel like from right here, this angle that I have here, one of the most underestimated muscles in the human body, I've always said it, is the left tricep. Yeah. I mean, for a right-handed golfer, it's, come on. It needs to have some movement with the body. If it doesn't have it, it just folds right across the body and then, right, right hand. Really rip it Absolutely, right and here's the thing, not just rip it. I wanna see that angle that you have created, pulling it down at a 45 degree angle here as you rotate, boom, and the rotation that's continuous, always be rotating, will make sure that the club doesn't get stuck in the ground, but hits the ball first and then passes through the ground. But okay. that angle is, people start to lose that from the minute they hit. And I'm just increasing that as I go. It's very important to think about that. Hit down on top of that golf ball. Mm, there we go. Oh, dude, look at the ball flight right away. You see that, Doug? Yep. Love that, buddy. 
You know what Gabe and I love about these videos too though, and what our students have been loving about the videos? Yeah. Well, I mean, first of all, how fun is it gonna be for like the seven-year-old twins to go back in 20 years from now and go look at their videos and be like, oh my gosh. But what's way cool about it is, that whole lesson that gets played back for you. Yeah. And you know, we do a good job of bullet pointing our stuff and having our thoughts, but what's really neat about it is you get to go back and watch how, you know, how, okay, Adam told me this, this is how I reacted to it. Yeah, I could see I could still do that better. I still could have, you know. Yeah. It's really cool because reality versus the perception of what we actually, you know. And you know me well enough that you know I'm gonna go back and like. Oh, I love know you, you'll pick it apart. I'll get the text from Doug, you be like, dude, but I could have done this and I could have done this. I go, Doug, we we're hitting it great. <laughs> Atta boy, that's changed everything right there. So about the height on, that? on that one, I would like, I mean, contact was great. Uh -huh. I would like to see you bring that down. Okay. Now, here's the thing. I also like to see you pay attention to when you're hitting the shot. One thing I think not enough people do is they, they hit to a yardage. Yeah. I don't think that's always the best play. And what I mean by that is this. For me, that's great. For you, you need to just hit for a minute. Okay. Hit. But be aware of one thing, where all the golf balls are landing they should be landing in a blanket. You should be able to throw a blanket over them, right. right? Especially with a wedge. So you hit them first without hitting to a yardage. Because why? You're not trying to force it to that yardage. You You're just, find out what your yardage, find is. Out what your yardage yeah. is. Then go to the golf course and understand the lack of effort you sometimes have to give to give it actually what it needs to to get to the comfortable yardage your wedges should be. A wedge, I mean, come on, it should never be, it's always 100% effort, yeah. but it's not 100% body and muscle effort, mental effort. Right. But right here, man, as far as the actual speed that I'm putting into it, I mean, it's 60% of what I'd be capable of. Right. And, and it's just efficiency that drives this motion. You know, when you watch your hands being in a position like Tyler's, to where that wrist is flat, that right wrist is set the right way, well, he's just moving that with the center of his body. Look at my sternum and hands together the whole time around my left side in my spine angle and boom. And that right there, I mean, just doing that with half the pace is gonna jump more than doing this with full pace. Right. That's what I want you to get good at. So drive it down, absolutely. Lower that ball flight. That was your best of the day right there, dude. That was your best of the day. Look at the divot too after the ball. So you hit 10, 15 of those, right? right? And I've seen that every good shot you've hit, I have a spot out there that it's landing on, right? What we do is, I mean, and we just, just get as close as possible on a driving range, working with people who don't have track man, who don't have our you know, flight scope, and the ability to be able to see the distances on the golf balls. Well, just do the best you can. Get up here and say, okay, we're four yards downhill to the point at which that's landing. Right. We also are using range balls, which, hey, for every 100 yards, that's gotta take off two, three, four, five yards, yeah. you know? So we can, we can guesstimate. So say we gun that and we said that's 95. Okay, minus four, but you know, we're gonna plus the four back for the, for, the, for the ball. Let's just check that wind real quick, okay? You know, we're a touch into, so that, that yardage went up a couple, and then you just get a gauge. Then what you do, and I'm talking to the average golfer that doesn't have a chance to utilize technology, right? right? right. Then go to your golf course, or go to a golf course with your golf ball and test it. Say, well, hey, I'm supposed to be hitting this 95 with the same effort I was putting in on the driving range. So, you know, I'm not gonna be forcing this, but I'm gonna take those same smooth swings, hit a couple shots, be able to come up with an idea of where the, I mean, that's the old school approach. Yeah. My dad and I used to, nice game. <laughs> my, my, he, he made it though, that was pretty good, dude. That was impressive. It was. Very yeah. Impressive. <laughs> but they, um, my dad and I used to do that. That was the very old school approach to, to, to getting it. And you know what's funny? Still worked. People still worked still great. Worked. Yeah, we don't. A wedge combine's fantastic on a track, man, if it's sitting there behind you, right? Still worked very well. Oh, man. Boom. So watch this. That ball's going to land on that same spot again. Yep, there it is, right within that same. Yep. I'm going to get a. You got a range finder? With very little effort, what'd you say? It's like a three quarter little swing? Yeah. 97. 97. 97. So, you know, can you hit that 105 easily if you wanted to? Absolutely, you know, would I, I would only tell you to do it if you had a front pin that was maybe downwind that you just had to, you know, hit it high and have it just come down soft. Right. That's when I would say, then you put a little bit extra into that and, and that ball will shoot up and carry, you know? But honestly, 
that stock little three quarter knockdown, that is your full shot. Yeah. So, you know, probably that's, I'd say anywhere from a 95 to 100 yard shot comfortably. How good is this? Yeah. I, I mean, over and over, right? And that's, see, that's, that's how that works out, though, is, you know, just he hit the same spot over and over. The balls are pretty consistent. They're not all chunked up. They're good golf balls. You know, we, we look at that spot, pick it out. You're like, wow, he's hit it like 10 times in a row. Nail it with the range finder. Do the math required, you know? And then what you can do is then go to the golf course, test it out and see, you know, you should, you should be within a yard or two, which really is, uh, for the average golfer, fantastic. Okay, biggest thing now. We have, let's go our recap. Wrist angle, okay, so butt of the club pointed more inside the hip, flat wrist, chest and hands together. The tendency for a lot of golfers who wanna keep the club outside is they pick the club up and keep picking it up. So that's, that, that's not what we're looking for. We always want your hands to be connected to the center of your body. That's the hand path, right? So very important that the club stays out in front, but your hand path is still turning. And that's what you and I worked on before that, um, the, the event you just played in. Yep. We had you making sure that your hands were still turning in, 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 to the top with your body. I'd rather, I would actually rather see that than I even would the club head in front of your hands because of the fact that hand path to me then relays into not having, you can at least move your body in the direction that you need to when the hands are connected to that. When that club is a little bit in front of you, but the hands then climb up, there's a lot of manipulating that has to be done. And when the hands climb up, think about this. You're vertical, right? The only way I get it going down my line, stand up and shallow it. This is late shallow, right? Rather than this, watch this. I'm here, I'm, I'm already there. Now I can actually turn my left hip in the direction it needs to travel. That's the part that people need to look at when they try to rotate like Hogan. Look at where those arms and hands were compared to the body. Right in front of the center, right there. Big body turn, short connected arm swing. Boom, right back around. That makes it possible. But when you're all over the place up there and it drifts a little bit, you gotta find that way of then reconnecting. Right. Big thing for you, elbows. We talked about wrist angle, elbows. So you're here. See my elbows, how close they stay to to one another. You, know, you saw Rory on the range this week with Pete Cowan getting a little bit of a classic approach drill here of just keeping the elbow in front, keeping the arms in front of the body and not having this happen where, wow, they're way behind me here, but they're more right in front of me. That's a big one right there. So I would do a lot of little things like that, Doug, where you, you know, work your takeaway and then get right here and then literally turn back and be like, wait, yeah, that is exactly where they would be if I turn sideways. Most, most players, and body turning together, the wrist was correct, and you had the arms more in front of your body. There you go. Dude, did you see that? That was unbelievable right there. Well, you know what is the best part about that one that the viewer couldn't see, which you can bring it up to? Dougie put that ball on a really unforgiving lie. Like that thing had a lot of sand on it right there. I mean, I was thinking to myself, dude, if you don't do what I'm telling you, this is not gonna work out on the swing. And you, hit it, you just hit it perfect, one of the best of the day. It's fantastic. Oh my goodness gracious, huh? Starting to get the thump to it, buddy. Now you wanna make it even tougher? Grab a shorter club and let's go to this little 65 yard shot right here to the red pin. You wanna grab my 58? Yeah, let's grab 58. Thank you guys so much for watching our video. Any questions or comments you have, please leave them below. Also, click the link below to pick up three free videos. We appreciate you guys. Enjoy our channel.